Good morning everybody. Welcome to Quintopia. And today I would like to share with you my review of the BB15000 from Minitrix. This is model number 12134 and it comes from the Minitrix 2010 catalog. The BB15000 shown here is to me almost an icon of French railways and to a certain extent European railways with the the broken nose front ends and the striking paint scheme really um, a classy iconic model and I'm really happy to have this in my collection the uh, the actual prototypes were built in the 70s as far as I can tell at least of this model um, and uh, you may notice that uh, it was only France that had these locomotives but the Netherlands as well uh, at least in appearance the NS class 1800 is very similar to the BB 15,000 and as far as Minitrix is concerned I do believe they're pretty much identical with some minor differences which I'll get into in a second. So let's go ahead and take it out of the box and see what we have here. As you can tell again it's nicely packaged um, in this uh, plastic case with uh, the polystyrene foam and the protecting plastic sleeve which I still have for it and I'll just grab the sleeve and gently pull it out of its box, set that aside set the locomotive up here um, Trix, as with most N-Gage manufacturers will pack its instructions and all kinds of information you might need, warranty and so forth down below the, the plastic inserts this is the locomotive, as you can tell it is uh, it's nicely done, it's got good weight um, looks fantastic, um, beautiful printing, and uh, I'm pleased to see that Minitrix has really improved its abilities in terms of picking out the, oh, there's a little catenary, little uh, pantograph popping up there, has really improved its um, abilities in picking out small details such as these grab irons, both here in the front and in front of the, the windshields here. So the exterior I'm really pleased with, looks fantastic. Um, but to convert it to DCC, we need to open it up. Opening this one up is fairly simple. It's again, find a convenient place to place a thumbnail or small strip of styrene underneath the body. Gently pry apart. Give it a couple of gentle shakes and very easily it comes right off. Here you can see it's got a NEM651 interface. So plug and play, DCC conversion, great. It's got uh, SMD LED lights in the front and back, bi-directional, um, which again, as soon as you put your uh, decoder in here, it'll work just perfectly and look great. It does have a five-pole motor um, with flywheels, so it runs terrifically. And the one thing I really love about uh, Minitrix so here are the uh, the two Minitrix versions of essentially the same model mechanically but as you can tell the the Dutch version does have the second pantograph to be I guess by current and it also has an important detail that Minitrix did not neglect which is that the Dutch version has a third headlight up here on the nose whereas the French version does not and that's uh, I think that's an important detail that you know good for Minitrix they did not neglect to add into their their model. Now I have another version of this locomotive. This is the Fleischmann version. Um, and it is painted here in the original green livery um, before they adapted this this T Trans Europe Express Arzens livery. This green livery, um, which I thought was pretty cool, I picked this up, had it converted to DCC, and then one day I set down my Fleischmann version next to my Minitrix version, I noticed something strange. Not sure how it, well it shows up here, but let me try a different perspective. The Fleischmann version is a little bit smaller. And you can tell from that view how the the roof lines on these two are, you can tell they're they're the same. You get the Fleischmann one, it's a little bit smaller, and proportionally the Fleischmann one does seem to be fractionally smaller than the Minitrix versions. So, quite problematic. Um, while I'm not that much of a, a prototype or scale guy, when it's the same model, 
you kind of want it to be the same size and look similar. And the, the, the differences in scale here are a little bit bothersome to me. Now time for the report card for the BB15000. Uh, before I go through the rankings here, I just want to point out one thing, correct myself. I said the uh, Series 1800 from the uh, the NS, Niederlandse Sportswagen, not Norfolk Southern, and the BB15000 here, shown here, um, were similar. They're only similar in a superficial sense. Um, electrically, the Series 1800 is very different. I believe it's by current to ensure it can run with the different um, voltages in the Netherlands and Belgium and France and Germany or whatever. I'm not really sure about all that. So I just want to correct that. The, uh, the models themselves, though, of course, are electrically identical. Uh, standard, you know, N-gauge DC voltage. All right, so let's get into the review, and I'll quit trying to act like I know what I'm talking about here. Uh, Appearance, let me make one comment on appearance. So I showed my son uh, my review of the Duag Tram, and when I gave that a 5, he was shocked. He goes, Dad, no way is that a 5. Look at it. It's not that. Well, I may have been a little bit easy. And in truth, when I started reviewing other locomotives that truly were exceptional, maybe the Duag Tram should have been a 4. So I'm going to grade a little bit more harshly, um, just to be more fair to truly exceptional models than I have in the past. Having said that, I'm going to give, and again, I'm going to say appearance on this one. I don't know as much about the prototype as others do, but the looks and appearance, the printing, the details, I think they really did an excellent job. Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to give this one a five on appearance. Despite everything I just said, I think it's really strong. It's a great-looking locomotive, and, uh, and Minitrix deserves credit for that. In terms of performance, it's quiet, smooth running. What more can you ask for? Another five. Conversion. Very simple, DCC plug-and-play NEM651 interface. And in my case, with this Minitrix NEM651 interface, there was no problems. I'm going to give it another five. Cost. Cost on these is really good. Um, you see them uh, occasionally uh, for sale between 99 euros to 120 euros. Um, maybe even better prices occasionally. They're still available. They're still out there. I think that's a, a really great price point for a, for a German uh, brand, so I'm going to give that another five. No X Factor on this one. Um, yeah, it's a nice locomotive in several different schemes. Love the fact that Minitrix is producing markets for markets outside of uh, its home country of Germany, but I'm not going to give it an X Factor in this one. So we got 20 out of, as well, obviously that's five out of five. So a total average score of five. So outstanding job on the Minitrix BB15000. And uh, I really enjoy this locomotive. It looks great. And as I said earlier, it's an iconic locomotive um, that really, um, to me, has a, has a lot of coolness about it. So anyway, uh, if you like this review, please uh, comment, post, check my blog out at quintopia.blogspot.com. Uh, and please stay tuned for uh, a little bit of... Uh, of this locomotive running around the layout, and uh, happy trains to you. Goodbye.